I'm going to show you the fastest and most effective way that I know of catching big panfish in the summer. In the spring, anybody can catch panfish. What people do is they go in, they hunker down, put down their anchors, cast the shorelines, and they catch a lot of big panfish because the panfish are in there, condensed, and spawning. It's very easy to catch a lot of panfish and a lot of good panfish, like 8-inch bluegills and bigger, 10, 12, 13, 14 inch crappies and bigger in the spring because they're all condensed in one small area. But in the summer, it changes. Right now we're in August, the dog days of summer, hot, humid weather, great for fishing by the way, but not always great for catching big panfish and a lot of them. So how do we fix that? We need to understand how panfish work to begin with. So in the spring, they're in shallow, they're spawning. I'm talking about the big ones, the ones that we desire, not the little dinks that sit in the weeds all summer long and hide from predators. Big panfish have a lot less to fear. They're not worried about being eaten as much as they were when they were like seven inches and smaller. So big panfish suspend, they go out further. And I know that intimidates a lot of people, especially if you don't have high quality electronics that are gonna show you these fish on your screen. No need to get one of those. You do not need a screen. You do not need a fish finder. You don't need a locator from what I'm about to show you. Instead, you wanna change your tactics a little bit. You need to cover water. And to do that, you just need some kind of device that floats. This can be a boat, this can be a canoe, this can be a kayak. It doesn't matter if you paddle, if you use a trolling motor, if you use a gas motor. You just need the thing to move you along to cover water. Second thing you need, is a lake, I'm gonna put a picture of the lake I'm going to today, where there are sporadic weed beds throughout. Generally, we're gonna be fishing about eight to 10 feet of water. This is important because those big panfish are not in three feet of water with muck and lily pads and those kind of weeds by the shorelines that you see all over lakes. That's not where big panfish generally go when it's warm after the spawn in the dog days of summer like it is right now. This will work on almost any lake that's got some weed structure and that's what's weed cover, excuse me, not structure, weed, weed cover, and you want the sporadic weeds. What you're going to do is you're going to paddle or troll through and in between and around these weeds constantly. You're just going to move around. You don't need to go in a straight line like you do when you troll a river. So get yourself any kind of rod and reel. You're going to want a number six or a number eight size hook. And what I plan on using is this barrel swivel, a leader, down to this clevis and spinner like this below that i've got a green bead silver and two small silvers and then below that i actually have a stop knot in case you want it to be back here the spinner to be back here and the hook to be further behind it you can slide that stop knot up and down i typically for panfish like to keep it as close to the bait as possible because that's what they're attracted to this is a number eight no excuse me this is a number six eagle claw bait holder hook what I'm going to do is I'm going to thread the crawler on and just have a little bit exposed off the hook, maybe a quarter of an inch before it bends, hanging off the hook like this. The hook point will be exposed. I don't want that covered up because a lot of these are reaction strikes, so you want to make sure you get the fish when they react to it coming through. I got my spinner all rigged up. I stopped at good old Walmart to get some crawlers because I was out, and now we're ready to go. Currently, I'm over eight to nine feet of water. Making sure my line angle is pretty good, which it is. Currently going 1.56 miles an hour, as you can see on there, in the upper left. Just got one, turned off the camera and just got nailed by one. There we go. Nice eater gill right there. Good eight inch hand sized gill. It's exactly what you're after out here. There, I just went over a little bit of a point. Some weeds were tucked up on the point near shore and then we just ended up getting this guy right here whoops beauty of a fish and that's exactly what we're after so anybody can do this anybody can come out here look for a little bit deeper water where the fish are suspended that was probably 20 yards away from the weed bed that you can see so i don't know if you can see there's random lily pads right there just a patch of them we're approaching a chunk of lily pads a break another chunk of break another chunk of break all over here this is not a hard to reach lake there's cabins all over along the edge here people know about this lake it's just not known for being a super good fishery all the time unless you do stuff like this where you can find fish where other people can't 
I don't know how much these lily pad patches are, are showing up, but you can easily find something like this in your area. I'm sure of it. All you need to do is go on Onyx or Google Earth or something, do some kind of satellite aerial map, and you'll find these pads all over. As long as the satellite photos were taken in the summer when it's warm, you'll find where these little lakes are located. And I have in little lakes, big lakes with bays like this. It doesn't need to be the whole lake. It can just be a section of the lake that's like this. And you'll find it, I'm sure of it. So take a look here, in front of the boat, you'll see submerged weeds over here, meaning they're above the water and it's obviously a little bit more shallow. 4.3 feet. Not the ideal. So we wanna be on the outside of that. So I'm gonna go where I don't see any weeds. I still see weeds in the water here. Random weeds all over. We're gonna cruise out of here. That's no good. Now that we're out and about, the weeds have gone away. I still see a couple over here, not too many. But now we can throw back that way and kind of circle around, make sure we're, we're not going into the weeds too closely. Just got nailed. Another keeper gill. What a beaut. Here we go again. Beauty that out. Just a beaut. If you've never trolled for bluegills, you are missing out. Let me tell you, you are missing out. They just nail it like you would not think. Just a beauty right there. Nice fish. I'm holding it tight so it doesn't jump, jump in the water while I'm trying to show you. I finally had to change the crawler after that. Those first couple of fish. And we've got another one. <laughs> I'm not going to say this is easy. Because you do have to have the right spinner, go at the right speed, the right depth, find the right body of water. But I'm also not going to say this is hard. It's really not. It's really not difficult. Once you get the hang of it. Once you find a lake like this, where the fish are all spread out, random weed beds all over, and relatively shallow lake, you're going to find that it's not difficult to do. The challenge is probably finding the lake first and then going from there. That's a good starting point. I am having a blast doing this. They are just hammering this bait. You would think I'm fishing for pike or bass or something. They're just, it's, it's incredible. Another big chunker right there. Beautiful bluegill. I know it's not just big because I'm holding it close to the camera. This is eight inches all day consistently doing this. I don't catch small bluegill doing this. I really don't. I don't know why. You think you get a little perch nipping at the back of the, uh, the crawler, which means I'm not catching, you know, 50 a night sitting on the edge of a weed bed because that's where all the small ones live. I'm out in the middle in the deeper water, seven, eight, nine feet where the bluegills are suspended trolling around trying to find where these fish are. It's a really great technique. I would love to hear your thoughts on it in the comments below. If you'd like to learn more about being a well-rounded outdoorsman, click on this video right here. Don't forget to subscribe there. We'll see you next time.